Third meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Woodford. Present. Councilman Henry. Here. Mayor Shelton. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Here. Councilman Walmart. Here. All present. Thank you. At this time, I'd like, like to invite the, those that wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Councilman Henry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful for your great love for us. We thank you for the freedoms we enjoy and the community that we have. And we thank you that uh, you give us the wisdom, the vision, the insight, the courage uh, to continue uh, as you would have us to do so. We ask these things in the name of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 3, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes or corrections? Uh, Mayor and council members, I do have two uh, changes I, I would ask you to consider. Uh, the first one being uh, adding item 4A, which is consider appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I would also ask you to consider under old business item 5C, which is the would be second reading on the food truck ordinance. I'd ask you to postpone that reading uh, or the second uh, reading on that. We've had some uh, very valid suggestions that we received this week regarding the food truck ordinance, and I think those uh, deserve some study and evaluation and, and trying to incorporate some of that possibly into the ordinance before final reading, and I'd ask you to postpone it, give us some time to look through those suggestions. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as, as uh, corrected? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Item 4A, <coughs> consider appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mayor and Council Members, we have, currently have a vacancy on the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, as a result of us hiring John Ward as our new Assistant Planning Director. So we need to fill John's term, which expires in January of 18. Um, and after that first year or completion of the, that term, they're eligible for a reappointment for a period of three years. And may I believe you have uh, contacted Ms. Yes, Bohan about possibly serving, um, and I've sent her some information. That's my understanding she's agreed to serve. If Correct. So I would make a motion that we uh, appoint Nancy Bohannon to this uh, open seat. Second. second. Motion a second. Any other nominations or any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. 5A Old Business, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on October 20th, 2016. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Five B. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0160921 amending the Cookville Municipal Code Title 14 chapters 6 and 7 pertaining to revising the stormwater detention design criteria. Greg Brown. Mayor and Council, uh, the main thing this uh, amendments to the ordinance does is we're adding a <coughs> you know, excuse me, I'm a little hoarse today. Uh, we're adding HDPE pipe is an allowable uh, material to be used in our right of way. We're changing the minimum area required uh, for impervious area that we would require detention from 10,000 square feet to 5,000. We're adding a definition for redevelopment. Uh, anytime you develop a site that's already been developed, if you disturb 50% or more of the sites, you would have to uh, provide detention and we outlined how you would uh, design that. Uh, we received one, I've received one call since the first reading and it was just a call wanting some clarification. I've not received any calls either for or against other than that. I request your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I do have a qu yes, question sir. just for clarification. Of course, it'll be, we went over this work session. I talked to the, uh, our city manager about that, but my, my understanding is that it, <clears throat> it, 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 it's, correct me if I, putting this together wrong, but it can't really be grandfathered anymore. If there's a piece of property anymore that's been sitting like a, with a flat stand of asphalt, uh, in many ways, in many cases, you used to be able to just come in there and just redevelop it. And you didn't have to, you didn't have, because it was grandfathered and you didn't have to put in uh, water retention detention. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and that, now that what we've done in our, in our code is to change that to where it. Uh, if, you, they, if they develop the site, disturb 50 percent or more of the, of the land area they would have yeah. to provide detention. So that's that's a change that's important because yeah. there's going to be lots of folks that, that, with way cookville's growing there's going to be lots of properties that have been developed for a long time they're going to be redeveloped 
And there's also, uh, and I know Mayor Womack, uh, excuse me, Kelsman Womack was real bit, uh, at one time was, uh, there's items in there about pervious, con pervious concrete uh, for developers if they want to do that, which is kind of new for Cookville, but I think I, li I like that idea. And we've allowed that in the past. Uh, oh. That's just one option they can do. There's several different options they can do for detentions, okay. and we try to work with the developers to make the best fit for the site. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other questions? All right. Seeing none, I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Under new business 7A, consider approval of relocation of a sprint fiber optic line on the Bennett Road Extension Project not to exceed $29,852.66. Greg Brown. Uh, during the course of the construction of the bridge over the uh, railroad <laughs> on the Bennett Road project, the Sprint line uh, was discovered not to be where it was shown on the plans. Uh, it was located before during design, but it wasn't exactly in the right spot. So to, to construct the bridge, it's going to have to be moved about four feet. Um, we've got a, a price, <clears throat> a not to exceed price from Sprint for $29,852.66 to move that and that should not exceed that price and I would recommend your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? I just one quick question. I yes, apologize. Sir. I wasn't at the work session. So this was this was a, a surprise we didn't anticipate. Was this a then is this a budget item or are we amending, are we amending, amending the budget or? A, well it's it? part of the con we, well, it depends on how the final contract price comes in because that's a unit price contract for the construction. The line, we knew the line was there, but yeah, we didn't. <clears throat> when it was located before any digging was done, they'd located it at one spot, and it turns out it was you know, three or four feet uh, from that spot. So and it's in one of the piers for the bridge. It's in the way, so it's going to have to so be So this moved. is the cost of moving it? This is the cost of moving the line, okay. about four feet. And it will stay within the railroad right away. They're not to give moving it out of the railway. They have an easement with a railroad to locate the sprint line within that right away. So, mm. any other questions? I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion. Thank you. Thank you. Seven B. Consider approval of acquisition of property at 340 North Cedar Avenue for Cookville Regional Medical Center. Mr. Korth. Thank you, Mayor, Council. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, Paul Korth with Cookville Regional Medical Center here tonight to ask for your consideration and approval of a piece of property that the uh, board has voted to approve to purchase. And that piece of property is located at 340 North Cedar, which is at the corner of 4th and Cedar. Um, it's <coughs> currently um, owned by the doctors um, Douglas and Ivy. Uh, the purchase of the building is for the building, the lot, and uh, several pieces of medical equipment and furnishings that are in the building. Medical office is approximately 5,400 square feet. The land is a little bit over 27,000 square feet. And um, also in the purchase would be medical equipment and furnishings. There's six exam rooms that are completely furnished with exam tables. There's two other procedure rooms that are completely furnished also with power exam tables. And um, various office um, furnitures and fixtures and also one portable ultrasound machine. A total purchase price for the building lot and equipment is $825,000 and uh, funds out of cash reserve would be used to purchase to purchase this piece of property. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Let me go. Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Corth, th this is the reason you're buying this is for to urgent care. This would be to expand our urgent care operations. Uh, right. We recently opened one. Um, How much larger is this building than the existing? Urgent it's about 1,500 square feet larger. Larger. Um, but it's laid out much better. That the current room, uh, the current building we're in right now has six exam rooms. This building has eight exam rooms, but it also has four medical offices. And those offices could be easily converted over into probably two exam rooms each. So additional anywhere from, depending if you took all four of the um, physician offices, you could easily take two to three of those out and come up with four to six more exam rooms. Okay, and what would you do with the existing? The existing, the existing building would be used for um, other activities at the, at the facility. I don't have anything um, in mind right now, but we could use that building for either other physician office practices or other ancillary services. Okay, and you're gonna use the money out of cash reserves and that's gonna keep you in compliance with your It does keep reserve. us in compliance with all bond covenants. And bond yes. covenants. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I guess uh, my question is a little bit like Jim's last observation there. 
uh, $825,000 coming from cash reserves. Uh, even with that withdrawal from the reserves, you're still comfortable with the amount that's still left in there, that it, it, it's still at a comfortable level? Yes. We're, uh, with with the two covenants that we were required to keep, which is days cash on hand yeah. and your debt to asset ratio, uh, you're, we're still very, yes, very, very much within those covenants. Yes. Thank you. I can attest serving on the hospital board that those things are discussed um, uh, very diligently about 12 hours per board week uh, <laughs> of the meetings that uh, I attend. So um, those are very much uh, always looked at. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? I just have, I'm just have a, kind of a curiosity. I just have a curiosity question. Uh, yes. Paul, just the, um, is this a trend you're seeing? I mean, the, ur that urgent care clinics because it's a little bit, it's a little bit non, it's a little bit non-traditional. Right. We, we have seen urgent care clinics that have been popping up now for, for years, you're but but this is a really the first uh, putting your toe in the water kind of uh, thing. I know you've had the clinics exactly. for a while, and we, we, do, is this a trend that you feel like the, that the hospital needs to position themselves in order to take care of the health healthcare community needs? And 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 and, the, and my second question, two part question, is that is what we've been doing. S successful so successful that we're need you need more space that's what it sounds like answer the first question is it's it is the trend in america for more and more urgent cares if you read any publications about mm -hmm. all the walmart clinics that are open the kroger's are putting in clinics throughout throughout america cvs um <coughs> and other walgreens and other other pharmaceuticals are um, <coughs> stores are putting in urgent care clinics it seems to be the trend now mm -hmm. america's the younger generation seems to not want a primary care physician they basically are looking for the fast quick thing to fix what they have today and move on mm -hmm. um, and it's just what's going on in america with our new new generation in um, and out <laughs> i'm sorry jim in and out yes in and out fast convenient mm -hmm. and um, in and out uh what makes this what makes this building attractive is the location the location right across the street from the emergency room so as people come to the emergency room for those minor illnesses they'll see this open and we'll have an extended hours so you're, it's more of it's not so much uh, because of lack of room it's the lack of lack of or, but you've got more patients than you can handle. I got you more need, patients in the emergency room than. But we can you got have. more patients in the emergency room, which is right. the most expensive care you can have. Which is obviously most expensive. Get yes. the, okay. We just finished the year and we had fifty-three thousand emergency room yeah. visits this year. So um, up tremendously for the last several years. I think the last. I think I looked at some statistics the other day. In the last um, five years, we're up almost eleven, eleven and a half, twelve percent in visits. Um, so that's close to 6,000, 7,000 emergency room I appreciate room that because that emergency room is just, so is just socked in. I walk through there all the time. It's it just, is. It's socked all the time. So if you It's divert, extremely busy. I appreciate the, the forethought um, for the members okay. of the board, board of trustees doing that in our administration. Thank you guys doing that it, very much. It's actually a two-pronged, though, and off it's offense and defense because right. it's very important. It's strategically placed across from the ER, and we certainly wouldn't want someone else opening an urgent care clinic in, in front of our hospital, which that – could have certainly been done. So it serves it serves a dual purpose to achieve our goal of relieving the stress and strain on the on the ER. Got it. Thank you. And it's also be extended care for our employee health clinic, the employee health clinic that we currently have in in the in the hospital. Um, this will be another avenue for our employees and other other individuals throughout the community that use our employee health program to have those extended hours. Because as I said, we're going to be open seven to seven Monday through Friday, and we're open on Sundays from eleven to seven. So giving that extra time for those Sundays individuals. Are, Sundays, Sundays unique, are key. is unique right. in the community for urgent care. There's, we're, I think there's maybe one other. One of the few, yes. I think, there, I think there may be on one, one more open okay. on Sunday. But uh, appreciate the hard work. Yeah, that's a, a lot, of, lot, lot of thought went into it, as I, as, as I, well, expe as I well expected. And I, I just would have wanted some clarification. Sure. I appreciate that. Thank you no guys problem. very much. Did you have oh, a question not directly related to this, to this yeah. uh, agenda item, but it, based on just a comment you made. What do you attribute the uh, you increase in the emergency room visits? What do you attribute that to? Do you have, do you have, your, have any idea? Growth in the community. We have, we have more, more individuals in the community, more people coming to Cookville for other services and also health care, but just our growth overall. Um, and I think, too, that you're seeing, again, more and more people going to emergency rooms and clinics instead of going to a primary care physician. More and more of our patients that we see don't have a physician, a primary care physician, whether it be an internal medicine or family care physician, that they go to routinely. <coughs> and I like our generation. Our generation, we had that established physician. We went to him for 
employee, we went to them for physicals once a year. Yeah. We went to them when we're sick. Nowadays, you're seeing more of the younger generations not doing that. Any other comments or questions? All vote. Obvious votes, motion carries. Thank you. At this time, that concludes the agenda portion of the meeting. We have uh, time if we have a, any citizen that would wish to address the council on a non-agenda item. We would invite you to do so. Do you have anyone? All right. uh, council, anyone have any comments? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Henry for having uh, the uh, people in the community talk about the homeless. Uh, that was in our Envision program, and we had a good meeting about that, and, and Councilman Henry may want to talk about that a little later, but what I primarily wanted to uh, bring up was the uh, preemption thing. We talked about it at Power of Putnam today, and we're having a cigarette butt pickup, Breathe Easy Walk, which goes along with Healthy Tennessee, and we can also give you some water bottles at the same time uh, when you do that on uh, November the 12th at 1 p.m. at Canton Creek Park. And I'd like to invite the community uh, to come to that, and we'll talk a little bit more about trying to get preemption ended uh, in Tennessee. So, but uh, Councilman Henry's uh, thing about the uh, doing something for the homeless looked to be a great idea. Just, just a brief observation, Mayor. We, I guess I should be embarrassed. I was, I was surprised, and no, it was James Mills there, who's in charge of our plane, uh, the department pointed out that uh, during the uh, envision cover process, uh, the quality of life category, uh, the number two priority after after 80 or 100 people gathered here on a Saturday, we had about 950 people or so uh, participate online, and then another 500 or so were mail questionnaires or utility customers, and and the homeless issue just kept <laughs> surfacing. And I didn't personally, honestly. Uh, wasn't aware that we had that significant of an issue. So we gathered some folks today who deal with that issue on a daily basis and came up with some good takeaways. And we're just trying to determine what role, if any, the city could play in that. Maybe we could facilitate some things. We could we could bring some groups together. We can, uh, And we got some good ideas about how to get that started. And uh, there are probably other gatherings down the road. I think one of the things they said we could help do is to get the landlords together so they could talk about what uh, – uh, what the needs were and how the landlords might participate in that. So good things are going to come out of that, and I appreciate the folks who, who came from the various agencies and entities and nonprofit groups uh, to the meeting today. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot of activities we all can do on the weekend, and there's one that's coming up this weekend uh, starting uh, tomorrow and Saturday's Mistletoe Market over at the chamber so uh, that'll be from nine to seven friday and saturday so we're going to do some early christmas shopping there'll be some good gifts over there and stay local and spend your tax dollars in cookville any other comments right, thank you we will be adjourned